The third reason is the change in price effect on income. Also known as sometimes the income effect. Let's say the income of consumer was 1000 and the price of any good was 100. So by using this 1000 rupees he was able to buy 10 units of goods. Now effectively let's say the price went down from 100 to 80. Now at the same price the income of the consumer even though in monetary terms remain the same the effective purchasing power of the consumer increased. Why? Because now with 1000 rupees he can buy 12.5 units of that same good. So with the fall in prices the income or the purchasing power so let's say this was your price quantity at 100 rupees you were able to buy 10 quantity at 80 rupees you are able to buy 12.5 ok sorry I made this a wrong thing so with price fall you are able to buy 12.5 so the downward slope continues so with every fall in the price of the good the purchasing power of the consumer increases and therefore the demand of the product also increases Fourth reason, new consumers. Now what happened here is that as let's say there were two people A and B. A's income was 1000 rupees a month and B's income was 800. And let's say when the price was 100, A was able to buy 10 units. But if B would have gone and tried to buy this, he would have been able to buy how many? 800 rupees, 100 per unit. So 8 units he would have bought. Now assuming these 8 units were not sufficient for him to feed his family, what he would do is he would not purchase this commodity. But when the price fell down from 800, sorry, from 100 to 80, B could also buy 10 units of this good. So what he decided was that let me buy this particular good, which will re require give me 10 units, which I need to feed my family. So what happened was that as the price fell, there were new people who came into the market. And they also created demand. So as demand was created, the quantity demanded kept on increasing because of these new consumers. Okay. And last one is different or alternate use. Now, what happens is that when the price went down, okay, let's take this case as rice. When the price of rice went down, the family decided that till now we were just cooking rice and using it as it is. Now, since the price has gone down, 
let us also use this to prepare dosas. Now for those of you who do not understand the meaning of dosa, dosa is an Indian food wherein you prepare a chapati, you put in some potatoes here and a lot of spices and all and it's prepared and it's eaten with the dal called sambar. So what happened was that as the price went down, the family decided that okay, we'll use this for cooking rice plus we can also use this additional 2.5 that we got for preparing dosas. Similar is the case for some other products. So let's say, let's take the case of petrol. Normally, a guy was using a motorbike because that's the one which uses minimum amount of petrol. As the price of petrol went down, he decided, okay, maybe I'll use some part of it for car as well. So there were alternate use which are being put for petrol as the price went down. And therefore, the total demanded quantity increased. Okay? And that's the reason for increase in demand. And whenever there is an increase in demand at every fall in prices, 